Good morning. I thought I'd just come at you guys with a quick video this morning because there was a conversation where people weren't quite sure how artist trading cards or ATC swaps work. Let me just walk through some of the points that I found confusing when I was first starting doing them, and hopefully it will unconfuse you some folks. So what is an artist trading card? Basically, it's a lot like a tag in that it's a flat thing, which is decorated generally on one side. The reverse side will have artist information on it so that people know what swap something came in and essentially how to contact you. Some people will flip through these for inspiration as well. As you can see, my ATC box is pretty full. Um, this is one Graphic 45 made, so there are pre-made sort of boxes for these things out there. Um, but hit me up if you want a template. Um, really, any card box can be adjusted. So what is an ATC? Well, originally these were made by generally um, flat artists like painters and that kind of thing, where they would trade with each other at art shows, because if you've ever been to one, like there's a lot of downtime. So it's a fun way to sort of send, you know, have something you can trade with other artists. You can use all sorts of different materials in the ATCs themselves. Um, I guess I would say they started with a lot of painting and drawing and, as mentioned, like flat art kind of stuff. But we've also, like as card makers, started using a lot of card making techniques as well. So you'll see stenciling and mixed media and all sorts of different things when you're looking at ATCs. It bears mentioning that some people put a lot of time into their ATCs, but they can be a really quick and easy thing to do especially if you're using ephemera or pattern paper or printables. So don't look at these that I'm going to show in the remainder of the video and think like yours have to necessarily look similar to them. It can be really whatever makes you happy in terms of the creative process. Then the card community kind of picked them up and now we do swaps very similar to any other card swap. It's just rather than swapping a card, we swap an ATC. And typically the ATC swaps, you have more partners than a card swap, or normally you'd have maybe one in a card swap. With ATCs, it's generally grouped, I would say, in groups of kind of 4 to 12 people is what I've seen. But I thought it would be fun to walk through a couple of these, just to show you that while they all are the same size, they're all really different, so you can do uh, whatever you want. So standard sizes on these are two and a half by three and a half. If I stick it on my mat, you can see that that is true. This is four inches, so three and a half by two and a half. That's really the only requirement. Probably a secondary requirement is to have a label of some sort on it. Um, and also to potentially label the envelope you're mailing it in with what the swap is so that people know. Because often people are involved in a bunch of swaps and it's always nice to know basically who to thank and where to post a picture of the cool thing and whatnot. So I would say definitely label it on the back. This is sort of the standard format. Obviously, you can print these all out uh, out of Word or something, or uh, they do make stamps that are available if you want just a template and then you can write it in. Um, this, is a, this is a sticker, basically, this looks like. Um, so you could do it on standard paper, sticker paper, whatever. The other point mentioning is um, using a fairly thick base is helpful because if you look at this one, it's embossed. Often they'll have many layers of things. Just going to walk through a few. Um, you know, here we'll have one with, this has sort of a 3D gummy bear enhancement on it. Very cool idea. Um, here we also have multiple layers. So the good news with these is you're never going to be over postage, basically. Um, but you will want to use a sturdy base. I typically use a double layer of cardstock, generally 80 pound. It kind of depends whose cardstock I'm using. It might be 67 pound Michaels, but you know, two layers of cardstock plus the sticker are going to give you a pretty sturdy base, and then uh, your card's going to be good to go. And I just glue them together with wet glue. And I would say the, as you can see here, sort of the common idea is that really the whole card is mostly a focal point this i think is an excellent example of that um this one also oh this one is really cute uh let me see if i can grab it this is a this is a not too shabby um love is a gift because they own the paper anyway but typically you'll see sort of a focal point and then maybe pattern paper maybe an ink blend uh obviously like this one here has no background which really gives you a lot more contrast and you're more like visually drawn to the element so do whatever you want. I'm just sort of uh, walking through these. 
Um, in a swap, you will typically also see some people are going to put the ATC inside a card. Other people lately have been doing these custom envelopes, which are super neat. Because then if you want to put in a little bag of something extra, you can just put it all in. Um, these are really easy to make on an envelope board, and it's a good way to use up your single-sided paper. If you're like me, you have too many pads of that. It's a good example of sort of a limited color palette with a really striking idea. The other thing to be aware of is these will never really be over mailing weight, but they will, you maybe have to worry about the dimension depending on how much you put on. All of these really don't have a ton of dimension on them, but if you look at something like this wax seal, like that might be over the quarter inch. I think this would, wouldn't need extra postage, but, um, you know, depending on what you do, it may. And the other thing you could do is put them in a very small bubble mailer. Obviously, that would be a little pricier from a shipping standpoint, but, you know, do whatever you like. So um, I think that's pretty much it. And I would say goodies and a card are definitely not required. I've done a ton of swaps where I've just put the card in the envelope, um, potentially taken like a piece of copy paper to protect the top of it, because um, I usually put some kind of embellishment on. But as you can see, it's a really cool way to see work in real life from a whole bunch of different artists. So I definitely encourage you to participate in them if it's something you think you'd find interesting. Oh, I guess one more point before I go. Um, some swaps will suggest that you make identical ATCs. I would say the most common thing that I've seen is they need to be similar but not identical. So sort of like sisters but not twins kind of a thing. Um, typically what I'll do, and I'll this will be my... Really my last tip, but typically what I like to do is make a master board. This is made out, this I made on a live, but um, this is basically lunar paste on top of just some ink blending on some pattern paper. The If you do these, this 12 by 12 single sided pattern paper is really good for that. But I'll typically make a master board, chop that up, and then decide what focal image I want. And then, you know, generally die cut or um, like if you saw my last round with the butterflies, they use sticker stickers. But anyway, uh, I'll t I tend to keep it fairly simple, but some people go really elaborate. So just do whatever makes you happy, basically. So that is my sort of walkthrough of at least my understanding of ATC swaps. And uh, if that's helpful for you, that is awesome. If not, uh, well, you probably at least got to see some cool looking cards. Talk to you later and have a great one. Thank you.